Hi, I'm Todd Reichart, and I'm in one of those magical places that have earned New Jersey its nickname as the Garden State. Over the past year, it's been my privilege to work with the Princeton School Gardens Cooperative, an initiative by parents, teachers, farmers, and local chefs to bring farm fresh local produce into the school lunch programs here in Princeton, New Jersey. In this brief video, we'll give you an overview of our efforts here so that you can learn from our mistakes and gain from our successes. Our Garden State on Your Plate initiative traces its heritage to this garden, a volunteer effort at Riverside Elementary School started by Princeton resident Dorothy Mullen. In the aftermath of 9-11, she wanted to literally plant something to help the healing. A dear friend suggested she create a garden for the local school. Dorothy's garden has nurtured food education and inspired young children. They delight in visiting the garden, working there, learning from what they see, what they smell, and what they taste. Today, there are similar volunteer gardens at all of Princeton's six public schools. The program we created with a grant from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation takes the next logical step. Educate children about food and where it comes from. Local resident Fran McManus is one of the organizers of the Princeton School Gardens Cooperative. So we wanted to expose children to um, local farm fresh food and, and tie that food back to the farms and then we wanted to bring a community together, uh, the, the culinary community, the schools, the parents, the farmers, to talk about what resources we have within our community in order to um, improve the health and, and diets of our children. It's sweet this year? Right here, I mean, I just picked this, you can eat it right in the field. Yeah. See how that looks? People think you have to cook everything, but you don't. Perfect, just like that. Another potential benefit? By bringing New Jersey's abundant local produce into school cafeterias, create new markets for Jersey agriculture. We're losing farmers in New Jersey. Um, if we're going to have farmers producing the food, we need to assure them that they're going to be able to sell it. And part of that is increasing the number of places we bring it. And we'd love to be able to bring it to more schools, to kids just like you, like the Swiss chart. The old stereotype, kids not wanting to eat their vegetables, that we were ready to tackle. You know, their media is saturated, it's being told what they like, but when they're given the opportunity actually to, to try things on their own, I find the younger people are, are going for it. Gary Guyberson, an executive chef at the Lawrenceville School and a nationally recognized proponent of better nutrition for children, was one of the first chefs to sign on. To him, the Princeton Initiative harkens back to the way school cafeteria food used to be. A lot of the food was generally local and uh, being cooked by real chefs, not particularly chefs, but uh, you know, professionals to a degree that they were preparing fresh food in cafeterias, and that going back in the, in the early uh, part of the 40s and 50s. Now, as it evolved into the industrial food chain, more and more of it became less um, local and less hands-on and more frozen and processed. To challenge the status quo, Princeton School Garden volunteers came up with an ambitious plan. Buy fresh produce from local farmers and have Chef Gary and other local chefs create simple dishes highlighting the vegetable's natural flavor. This soup is one of my favorites because it's pretty easy to make. It doesn't In addition, have... produce videos to put on YouTube that would introduce the chefs and farmers to the children to generate enthusiasm for the upcoming taste tests. I'd like to take you through the process and show you exactly how these peas started out. And it has this beautiful tendril that the chefs like to see as a, when they use it for a garnish. Okay, Chef Rob, take it away. Thanks a lot, Bruce. Thanks a lot for the pea shoots I got them. Uh, Rob Harbison, the, a chef at Princeton University, was grow. also part of the program. You leave it to grow, it's going to turn into a, a pea. Rob's enthusiasm triggered the interest of his boss, Stu Orofici. We hope that um, the school systems, at least in our particular area, can adopt what we've adopted here at Princeton, which is Mother Nature designs the menus and not necessarily uh, federal government or a manufacturer of food products. Uh, that way you can benefit from the fresh foods that are within your own region. We matched farmers with chefs. 
the chefs then brought their prepared dishes into school cafeterias for the taste test. Over the school year, we hosted eight tastings. It sounded very exciting that we were having a chef, a real chef, come to our school and prepare something for the children to taste. My skepticism really mostly had to do with wondering how am I going to have all this happen in our very short lunch period. One of the key difficulties was uh, coordinating with the school schedules and that probably we would have benefited from coming to the schools earlier. We came to them very early on for permission, which was key, but in terms of coordinating what we wanted to do with what their schedules were, that we should have handled that much earlier. Along the way, we wanted to know, is it working? Do the kids like it? So at each tasting, we methodically recorded their reactions to the farm fresh food. Remember, what we were serving them was pretty different from their regular cafeteria fare. Come on, are we excited? To make fresh cranberry relish, it really doesn't take a lot of time. Natural sugars in it created a nice little syrup. Uh, the cinnamon has created some nice aromatics, and they've basically uh, become a compote. That when it's chilled, it'll actually be a little bit gelled as well. I decided to start liking cranberries. You did? When did you, when did you decide to start liking them? Um, just, just today. I, today? Mm -hmm. yeah. I just tried them and then I said that I liked them to myself. You can try my salsa. Well, I think the thing that's working um, is seeing how vegetables, if cooked properly, taste good. In fact, my first grader who eats pretty much a steady diet of noodles, cheese, and butter, uh, actually licked the Swiss chard, which is a major breakthrough for him. I guess I'm a natural contrarian, but the kids just love this stuff. They really do. <laughs> it's fantastic, right? I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, no strings attached, just, uh, you know, try some, try some fresh food. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the school year, one of our parent volunteers surveyed other parents to get their reaction. The parents loved the program. They thought it was fantastic. They were so happy that ki the kids were being exposed to fruits and vegetables. They wanted just to see more, different, just a, a greater variety of, of uh, fruits and vegetables and more often. Through our initiative, Garden State On Your Plate, we built connections. We connected farmers to schools. We took students on field trips to farms, farmers markets, and restaurant kitchens. <laughs> What is what? What is that? That's what you're going to eat in just a minute. We connected chefs to chefs, chefs to f teachers, and chefs to contract food service employees. Well, after we had the, some of the tastings here, and, and I saw um, you know students in the second and third grade come up for a second helping of pea tendril salad, you know I was motivated and I was challenged myself to see what else can we do. And uh, I really believe that we can go forward and actually prepare meals and to have our chefs uh, go into some of the school systems and help uh, provide a full meal, not just a taste and not just a, a small salad. And I'm thrilled uh, to say that those that are operating that food service are open to that discussion. And we got some recognition in the papers and on TV. It happened when New Jersey Congressman Rush Holt came to showcase the wide-ranging benefits of improving the nutrition of school lunch programs. I am often surprised at how little children know about where the food comes from. So here at Community Park Elementary, we're celebrating the partnership with the Princeton School Gardens Co-op. And the mission of the school gardens is to, in their words, foster garden and food-based education in the classroom, the cafeteria, and the community. Uh, you've noticed that there are beautiful gardens at every one of our schools. Our students have this in their curriculum, they have it in their lunch rooms, and we are eager to be able to expand this program really thanks to the impetus of our parents. In short, we created a community, a real community, around real good food. Relationships. That's the piece of advice I would give, that you have to form good relationships within your community in order to pull together the resources necessary to run a program like this. There's no one way to run this kind of project. It has to be tailored at any locale to what the conditions are, what the assets are, what the limitations are. But 
you can overcome a lot when you've created a network of people who are all committed to the same goal, which is to feed children uh, the highest quality food that we, we are able to and who, are, uh, who all get along and want to work together on a project like this. You know, over the past year, we've learned a lot from our farmers, chefs, teachers, students, principals, and our many, many generous volunteers. So what's next? Well, it's a work in progress, and you can follow our progress at psgcoop.org or at the Princeton School Gardens Cooperative Google Group. We'd love to hear your stories so that we can learn from each other. Thanks for watching.